So here's the Sasebo W again, and I'm going to set up the Chip Whisper on it, which is the new OpenADC firmware and software. So the previous video showed you how to mount it. The only main changes are you have to make sure there's this jumper to connect two ground planes here, and you want to remove the reset jumper there. So the other thing you might need is this JTAG cable if you don't have another programmer. Uh, you only really need it once. After that, you can use another programming mode. So I'm going to fit this cover to it. There's uh, details in the linked website about the part numbers there. So when you're using it, you have this switch 3 here. Uh, when 3 and 4 are off, it's in normal mode. If you turn 4 to on, you go into flash programming mode, the FPGA flash programming mode. And if you turn switch 3 on, you can actually program the mega card as originally explained in the quick start guide with the Sasebo W. So anyway, how do you, assuming you already had this programmed, I'll first show you how you use it. So we'll put the smart card in and we'll plug the board in. We then run the Chip Whisperer capture software from, I'm running it from within the Python idle here. And we'll just move the window over so it looks something like this and you can resize it as, as you wish. We select the FTDI interface as well as the Sasebo W integrated for the smart card. You can hit connect on both modules and you should get the smart card answer to reset. You can hit reset again if you want and that'll give you some idea of what the ATR is. And you will also see some debug stuff printed in the console. Um, you can just move that over if you want. It can be useful, especially if you don't have certain modules. Um, so one of the things you can do now is this trace preview window. You can actually pull it out so you can see it's a little crunched over here. So we'll go ahead and just drag this off to the side and resize the Chip Whisper Capture main window. There we go. So this gives us a little more room to look at stuff. Uh, you also notice it's auto sizing, so you want to be sort of careful because right here, for example, we're seeing basically just pure noise. So I'm going to set the trigger to rising edge to trigger on the smart card. I'm going to give myself some gain. So we're starting to see a bit of definition. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to manually set the Y axis to minus 0.5 to 0 0.5. This is the total range of the input ADC. So I want to set up the gain to give me almost that entire range. Um, will give us sort of the best signal. So there we go. That's looking better. And you can sort of just guess here. Oops, that's too high. So it's clipping. We do not want that. So that's looking not bad. And you can just sort of play around with that until you get a good looking signal. There we go. Eventually you then can switch the clock source to external and you can check the clocks running. Um, and we can see, for example, a bunch of rounds of the AES being performed. So I don't actually need that much. I'm going to scale it down to only capture a little bit of it. You can drag and zoom in right on the graph if you want to um, look at specific stuff. And you can also enable the persistence mode, which will overlay a bunch of traces. And you can put auto color on, which will color them differently. So then, for example, you can look in, look in at one of the spots and see sort of what the difference is there. Anyway, I'm going to turn that off and just get one more to get us going. So once you want to do a bunch of captures, if you go over to the general tab, um, what you'll find is this these windows here, they're showing text in, text out, and you can also be given the expected value. If you have the PY Crypto uh, library installed, it'll check basically the output. It, it's just showing you what it is and what it should be. So you set the number of traces, say I want 200 traces here, and go ahead and hit start capture. And this will just go through and start writing them to the same directory as the Chip Whisperer Capture. Uh, it's using the DPA Contest V3 trace format. Obviously, you can modify it if you need something else. So how do we program the board to start with, assuming you just have a blank or a normal Sasebo board? So we go to chipwhisperer.com. And this opens up the Assembler project here. 
Um, there is a mailing list, so if you have problems, you should just subscribe to this and send a, send a message there, and then everyone can sort of benefit from the issue. So on the wiki, there's the various capture hardware. This is Cebo W. If you hit this, this page describes sort of plugging in the board and setting it up, um, as well as the programming information. So this is how some of the different programming steps work. And what you just need is the release files. So you can click there, download the .zip, and I'll just open it somewhere. Um, so this is the latest as of this video, the February 4th edition. You can sort of see what changes existed. Um, with this version, the February 4th, it adds this special SPI flash programming, which means you can program the flash attached to the FPGA through the FPGA without needing any of the other cables. For that to work, you have to have already programmed the FPGA with the pass-through firmware though. Um, so what this means is that initially you do have to program the FPGA using JTAG, which you can do through USB with the little JTAG cable. So assuming I have everything plugged in, I will just run load FPGA.bat and you may need to unplug and replug the Sasebo W board for this to work properly. Uh, once that comes up, you'll get a little window that pops up like this, and it should just go through detail parsing. Eventually, you'll get an output that says TDO OK. This takes about 60 seconds. Once it's done, we switch into flash programming mode, as you can see there. So we're adjusting number four to be on. So three's off and four's on. And then you just run the load flash dot bat file. Um, this one will program the SPI flash. So this takes some time. It asks you to make sure switch four is on. And it should discover the flash is okay. So found flash chip. And it reads the old one, writes the new content, and verifies it. Um, as I say, this takes some time, so I won't show you the whole thing going through. Some errors you might get if the driver is not installed or is not being detected, it'll start to look and then it'll give you this device minus three, device not found. Um, so this means there's a USB error. If on the other hand, the FPGA isn't passing data to the SPI flash or you haven't set the switch four to the proper position, you won't get the cable error, you'll get a different error telling you that the SBI flash isn't found. So there we go, flash chip isn't found. Notice it didn't give us the device error, it gave us a different error. So hopefully this quick video helped you get started with the Cicibo W and the Chip Whisperer software. As I say, send a message to the mailing list if you have issues. Thanks.